I was only 17. That morning, uh, that morning I was on my way to work. A friend of mine, uh, me and him used to work with each other. And uh, he came down and we were on our way to work. We used to walk through this, this place called The Farm. It's like, it's like an alleyway. That was the place that on the right into here, really. It's like an alleyway from my yard into New Barnsley. And two of us were walking through and uh, having a smoke. And as we walked up, when I looked down, there was a there was an old IRA man there. And uh, the mate goes to me and says, where's a rat? What's happening here? And I says, he said, I ain't well, something's going to happen to me. You're paranoid, ways up. What's going to happen to us? What do we do? So as I, as I walked by, the f it goes like a nail. So I could only see him. But as we turned to go up the way, there was another local IRA man standing there. As I walked by him, he says, me here, Paul, kid, stick out in your mouth. And I pushed him out of the road. And, uh, and then I started to swing and dig. And next minute, they started getting punched from everywhere. A couple, of, I don't know how many more came. I just heard footsteps because my head was on the ground. and just punching the head of me. And uh, I think one of them busted my nose. My nose was busted. And I just grabbed the sack. I mean, give me it. And I, I just put it in my mouth. And then they taped my mouth up. You know, that brown tape you see on boxes. They taped my mouth up. And then the guy told me to put my hands behind my back. And I put my hands behind my back, and he says to me, uh, oh, I close your fingers if you're if you're praying. And I close my fingers, and they tape my, they tape my hands up. And then they walk me up, and there was a car sitting there, and they bundled me into the back of the car. As I was getting in, I looked at the driver. I could see him through, through the mirror. And when he seen my eyes wasn't covered, he freaked out. Cover his eyes, cover his eyes. And next minute, the guy got the tape out, and he started taping my eyes. So I was freaking out, I thought I was going to die at that point. I couldn't breathe, right? My nose was busted, I was trying to breathe, and I could taste the blood going down the back of my throat. And I was freaked out. I mean, I thought, me, this is it. This, and I was thinking, what, what's happening to me here? You know, what's going to... What have, what have these done this for, you know? And then the guy in the back, he sat in the back of my legs. And next minute, he rubbed my head, and he says, don't worry, Paul, kid. We only want to have a word be. You're all right. Stop panicking. Everything's all right. So it kind of way calmed down then, and I was thinking, probably want to have a word with me, but doing that drawing in the, in the farm, though they're writing. And uh, so it brings me, drives me in a car, don't know where I'm going, I'm blindfolded, bringing me down, everything was silence, there was no questions. Get me out of the car, stand me up. They broke the tape in my hand, and then they taped me from my shoulders right down to my wrist. And they just basically, I was only about seven and a half stone, I was really small. It was about seven and a half, eight stone was bait. And they just turned me around, they were turning me around, I was going around, around in circles, they were just taping me from out of the air like a, like a parcel. So then I remember walking up like this bit of a hill. As I said, it was all silence. And then they lied me down, and I'm still thinking. At that point, I thought maybe they're going to paint me, the way you hear people getting painted. I thought, I, I didn't imagine that it was getting going to get the paint that I got like it. I mean, I didn't even think yet. So next month they lied me on the ground. And I felt them messing about with my ankles, and I heard one of them saying, Right, go use and grab them more things, we do this. So as they're messing, I heard the footsteps running, and then as they were coming back, one of them dropped the iron bar, and I heard the iron bars running, and I went, like, Oh shit, this is I was like, No, this can't be the next mile bump, like that, they lifted me up upside down. Now my shoulder was still on the ground, my shoulder in the back of my head. I remember them tying me to the fence, and just this excruciating pain around my ankles. I remember going, no way, no way, this can't be happening. I heard the footsteps coming down the side of me. I went, one, two, three, go, bang. Just felt that, that pain was, <laughs> I mean, you get a kick in the shin and you know how hard it is. You imagine getting an iron bar slapped off your, off your, I mean, my legs were like toothpicks at the time. So, it just started beating me and beating me. And I was trying to turn on the fence. I was like trying to turn my, you know, my legs around for the hit my calves. That's what I was thinking in my head. And, uh, so the tape then broke off my, because it was rolling about the ground, the tape broke off my eye. I came around and I looked up. And one of them put his hands up like that. And he went to cover his face. And one of them from behind then put their foot up against my eyes as they continued to beat me. And then I heard these kids screaming. I just screaming. And I heard, shit, there's kids with me go. And then they run. And that was me left. And I remember pulling, getting my arms up. Because I was in my work clothes, I was on my way to work. I was wearing this fleece, so I was able to get my arms up, pull the tape out of my mouth. As the tape came out, the sack like stuck on my throat and you're choked. Pulled the tape out, pulled it off my eyes and I just started screaming help. I looked down the alleyway, 
And I actually thought it was in a different area. I thought it was in Turf Lodge. And I just started screaming, help, help, somebody help me, somebody help me. And this, I, this wee woman came running out and she says, son, I, don't be worrying, the ambulance is on its way. And I'm like, get me down, get me down, please, because the pain was excruciating. And uh, so next week I seen these two girls. They were walking down with Puss and Prams and started shit. And I heard one of the girls going, that's a wee fellow up there. So the two of them came running down the alleyway. And one of them was straight and got my head. And one of them me, please get me down, get me down, get me down. And the girl went, I've nothing to get, she's trying to undo the thing. She says, I've nothing to cut this with. And I says, hey, do you have a letter? Burn it. I don't know where I got that from. So the girl pulled the letter out. And she started to burn it. And guess what happens next? <laughs> it snapped. God loved it too. Like it wasn't our fault. It just snapped, and my legs smashed off the ground again. And the, they were just jumping. I couldn't stop them. There was like I was like jumping over the alleyway, you know. And so the next went the girl went down and she held my two legs. And I, I remember my whole body just rattling. No one she held them. My body just rattled. And then I heard my uncle. He came running up. That's our Marie's wee lad. He says all these people were coming round me. You already, already. And all I was crying out for was a drink of water. Please give me a drink of water. Somebody give me a drink of water. And. uh so they, they wouldn't give me a drink of water and then my uncle he let up a fag me gives a smoke and he let up a fag and he's standing over me smoking a fag next minute my mum came and there was people trying to stop her for to come in and next minute my mum came and once she seen me she just collapsed boom so i was more concerned about her and then my dad raised on the scene and my dad hated the police <laughs> They hated even coming near the door, he just hated the police. So there was two policemen standing there, it was RUC at the time. And my dad goes, Paulson, it was three hooded men that beat you. I says, I know that. So he's more or less telling me, keep your mouth shut. Right? But I already knew that. <laughs> I wasn't that stupid. And uh, the cops are saying, I mean, look, three hooded men, three hooded men. So my dad started, he was drunk. He was, it was one of the, my dad was on the drink at the time. And he, he, he basically started fighting with the police. And I remember saying to him, what are you fake memories for? It was your mates that done it. <laughs> you know the metallic. I don't know why I said it, but 